Prayers are necessary. Thoughts and prayers are necessary, but they're not enough. We need to pray to God for guidance to give us the action steps to keep this community safe. Some of those will be. I'm going to ask Council Member Seekings and my other council members to um, put in place an accountability measure for landlords. There's rental properties like this one on South Street where repeated occurrences have occurred. The landlord needs some accountability and responsibility. And we will bring that council member to our next public safety committee meeting. Two, this investigation is ongoing, as the chief just mentioned, and arrests will be made. Arrests will be made for this incident. These are, by the way, not in order of importance um, as I go through them. Legislature. I think many people know that the hands of local government are tied when it comes to making ordinances or laws about matters with guns. Um, the state legislature relishes their um, control over that issue in our state. And we pleaded with them from time to time. I'm just going to ask them for one thing, just one thing. Give us a simple tool of making a graduated penalty system for offenders of, of, of gun laws. So if you go to the family dollar store and you shoplift, every time you get arrested, the penalty goes up. There's some disincentive to shoplifting again. If you, ha if you have an illegal gun or you break a gun, gun state regulation, one time, 10 times, 100 times, it's the same menial offense. That, that's just wrong. That doesn't make any common sense, y'all. Legisl members of the legislature, please give us something to work with. Number four, continued enforcement of what laws are on the books. We've made numerous seizures of illegal guns just in the last week, not on the east side, but throughout the city. And our police department will continue to make those arrests. Not related to this particular incident, we're gonna do that as well. But enforcing the laws that we have on the books. Promoting responsible gun ownership. Now this is a sad thing. Did you know that hundreds of guns that find their way out on the street and illegally used and used in crimes were stolen from unlocked cars. If you own a gun, be responsible. Secure that thing. Make sure it doesn't get in the hands of somebody that shouldn't have it. We will shut down unpermitted events. In the city of Charleston, if you have a gathering in a public space of more than 25 people, you're required to request a permit from the police department. Right, Chief? We will enforce that. You can have, folks can have gatherings on their private property, but if you've got a gathering that spills out more than 25 people into a pub, public right-of-way, you should have a, a, a police permit to have that gathering. If not, we're gonna shut you down. We're gonna review even traffic measures, um, um, Tyrone. Maybe South Street should be, uh, we'll look at the parking, uh, with the one-way status of it. Look at traffic in the east side and how that works and doesn't work. And could that lead to better police security and enforcement like we've done on Upper King Street. And lastly, although I'm open to all the suggestions our citizens and, and law enforcement uh, team want to make, 
but we will review our own response to this incident last night and see what went wrong, what went right, how we can do a better job, as the chief said, how we can seek better incomes. So um, that's an eight point plan. I didn't enumerate them all as I went. And um, I'm open for an easy two more if someone's got it so we can make it a 10 point plan. Um, so President Kennedy, when he closed his initial inaugural address, um, also made reference to the need for prayer, but that we pray for guidance so that God will lead us to the actions that we need to follow to make our community safer and a great place to live that we know Charleston is and can be. Um, without further ado, I'd like to call on uh, either Reverend McLemore or Swinton to share a couple of words with us, um, maybe even a prayer, although we know we're going to do more than that, and then uh, any uh, council member seekings, would you like to make any remarks? Okay. Reverend, would you like to make any remarks? Um, as a person and as a pastor of Ebenezer, I grew up on the east side. I understand uh, the challenges that exist in our community. And when I had the opportunity to return to the east side to serve as pastor of Ebenezer, I knew that there were challenges. And one of the challenges that we face in our community is gun violence. It is my prayer and it is my hope that we could come together as a community to solve this problem and to restore a sense of peace, uh, a sense of respect for human life in our community that we love so dearly. Thank you, sir. Not to put you on the spot, but Ms. Fields, as president of the Neighborhood Association, would you like to share any remarks? Yes, yes ma'am. We at ECDC, our prayers and thoughts go out to the victims and hope and pray that we all could take and come together and work better together and show more love. Thank you very much. Mr. Watson, would you like to share anything briefly? Briefly, but what I say, I don't want it to be brief. I want you to take it to heart. I want you to take it, the love that you have, the environment that we have here. Then I want us to have a conversation, a conversation that goes on about our civility, about our inner integrity, our self-respect, of what we should be teaching our children by an example of who we are, because we are the greater teacher. I want this to be applied not just in the community, but the city, the school board. But that conversation cannot be that when we come to you, that you only see that we are citizens. Look at the good that we offer. Look at what you can plan for the future to help. Look at what we have and want to be able to walk about and do. Look at what we grew up, I grew up in this community, to know that this churchyard, that's a part of us because we as kids came and read every stone, knew every place, knew the citizens in the house, knew they would correct us. But how do we, the citizens of the day, put that back in place? Do you want to do it? But then open your heart, use your hard hand to reach out and think of the thoughts that I tell you, the civility that we can teach them the younger kids from the day they born to know that we can help them to be a productive citizen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll open up for any questions uh, from the media at this point. Anybody has any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Mayor Teckenberg, this was supposedly the third party that's happened in this area in downtown Charleston within, I'd say, the last month, one on Saturday night. Residents say they've you know, asked you guys to address it any response to that? Have you guys looked at this leading up to last night's shooting? Right. I'm going to ask Chief Reynolds um, to come forward again on that one. Chief. 
Good question. Question was, uh, this is a third party in a month, um, and there was concerns brought to our attention a, a few weeks ago about the first one, um, and the concern that there could be bad outcomes. Um, and there was another party, I believe Saturday night, and then last night's party. We have to look at that closely. We have to look at that location and say why. Why are these parties at a singular location? Why are they leading to bad outcomes? Why um, is, is that having the impact on our communities that it has? And we need to fix the problem. But I will tell you, the police can't fix it alone. We have to work together in partnership with a variety of different entities. And a lot of these fixes take time. And one of the things that I'm looking very closely is at nuisance abatement. There's owners who own that property who are allowing that to happen. There's a vacant lot right next to the, the house that is the, the, the location where all these parties have been and where all these problems have originated. It's not rocket science. And so there's more that can and needs to be done. And, uh, and the community has been engaged in that conversation and they're not happy. And I'm glad they're not happy. I'm not happy. You, nobody should be happy with this type of thing in their community. There's not a community on this planet that should accept what happened last night on any measure, on any level whatsoever. And I'll tell you, as a police chief, um, I'm, I'm disgusted by the, the actions of a very few. That's not the, reflective of this community. This is a great community. I think it's important to emphasize that. This is an amazing, amazing community. And I pray for unity. We're going to work towards unity. We're going to uh, work towards building and strengthening of partnerships that we have down here so that we communicate and that we have better outcomes. Last night was not acceptable. It was not a good outcome. It was a bad night for a lot of reasons. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us uh, the ages of the people that I'm just going to give you some general ideas. Uh, I don't have a, a head count. Um, we're still reviewing video. We're still interviewing people. Uh, there was 10 people that went to the hospital. The latest one, I think, was 4 a.m. this morning, went to Trident. Uh, and it took a while to kind of figure out which ones were associated with this event in this location. There was a large event. There was people all over the place. Um, and there was people. Uh, at that vacant lot, um, I, I couldn't tell you. I've been told it could be up to a, a hundred or more people. Do you, do you have the ages of the victims? Yeah, I don't have the ages of the victims. Um, I can tell you that uh, they varied, um, and I, I, I don't. I don't have the ages. We could get that out fairly easily. Were any of them juveniles? Speak up again. Were any of them juveniles? Any juveniles? I'm not aware. Cheeto, are you familiar with any, any anything involving juveniles? I'm not aware of that, but I don't... No juveniles that we know of. One 17-year-old. One 17-year-old. Beth, do we know the ages also? Yeah, there's four adults. So 17 and the rest were adults. Um, does, uh, do the police have any uh, estimation of how many shots were fired? Uh, we had um, as many as over 100 markers for evidence. Now when you um, look at that more closely, those are not all shell casings, but many of them are, more than half. So you do the math. There's a lot of weapons that were fired. Handguns, long guns, two, three, two, three round. If anybody doesn't know what a two, two, three round will do, it'll blow your leg right off or blow your head right off your shoulders. Those were the types of rounds that were being fired last night. Those are the types of rounds that are regularly fired in our communities. So we have a gun violence problem. I've seen it. I've seen the pictures from the crime scenes. It's no joke. We're very fortunate that we did not have a number of deaths last night, including one of my cops. And do you have an estimation as to how many different guns were used? Is it just two or three? They're still working through that. There was a couple different groups shooting at each other, just generally. Um, Chief, do we know if these three parties are hosted by the same person? Do we know if they're connected in any way at this point? 
We're still working through that. Um, I've heard that there's others who were connected that, that I wasn't even aware of. Um, that's part of the process for the nuisance abatement. We're going to find out who's accountable. We're going to find out who um, is encouraging this illegal behavior and creating havoc in this community, and we're going to do something about it. And I think 99% of the community here is behind us. They, they want change. They're not happy about what happened. Yes, sir. Most of us who live in the neighborhood are shocked at what happened. So we weren't surprised that South Street has long been a lawless street. It's basically been held hostage by the drug dealers. What the chief described his officer going down there were immediately opened and fired shows just who owns it and how lawless the place is. What I've heard, what I've not heard here, is a plan to fix South Street. It's not just South Street, okay? But it is South Street. And what is the plan to fix South Street? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions from the media? Well, thank you all for being with us today as we continue together to address these issues. Thank you. And last, the last thing, sorry, uh, no one's in custody yet? The plan is meeting two women from earlier? Uh, the arrest for the disorderly conduct, which I think is you're referencing, and yes, there was another arrest this, later this morning that I referenced as well. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, back there in the back. Yes, ma'am. Thank you and, for those. And I agree with what you just said. And there's more work that needs to be done. Yes, ma'am. I, I think that gets to the point of like, how was this a permanent party? Like, have I missed that at some point? Because I'm hearing that one of the parties at the very beginning, some of the local residents were telling me that the first one was, but the other two were not. How could it be going on with 100 people if it wasn't permanent? It was on private, it began on private property. No, they weren't. Not permitted or authorized in any way by the city of Charleston. We, we don't permit residential parties. But we, we do control the public right-of-way. So if, if you're gathering in the public right-of-way, we do require that you get a permit. You can have a party at your house. As long as you obey the law, you don't have to ask our permission. And um, no, no one made those requests. Yes, ma'am.
there, well, there is a connect, and here's the connect. What happened last night, where there was hundreds of people in the street, if that's what happened, 100 or 200, whatever it was, and 10 people got shot, one of our cops almost got killed, two of our deputies were put in the hospital, that's a problem. We're going to address that problem. No community should accept that. You don't have to convince me of that. I agree with you 100%. I could not agree more. I couldn't say it better than, than you and others have said it. We need to do better. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, um, many of you guys know me from uh, walking up and down these streets from our tomorrow, today's tomorrow together. I have going on. I do agree that we do need to stick, uh, uh, come together and uh, address these issues because uh, I've been out here for four weeks. Um, you might see me up and down King Street, you might see the market, all up and down Main Street. I've been out four weeks and done. Putting this together, we need to end these groups. And it's getting out of hand. And we can't see the point things that this, that, and third. We just need to come together with a solution and just come to the table as one and just, just fix this problem because we come from a great, we have a great uh, city we, we represent. You know, we have um, festivals going on, uh, new construction. Uh, this, uh, I, just, I love it all. I'm not, I'm not from Charleston, I'm from Euclid, but and I'm, I'm here now representing, and I just wanted to say that we all just need to just come together. You know, and, and you know, we need to split now. You know, united we stand. You know. Yes, sir. We come from the uh, America to, to, to me, what I was taught, the land of the brave, home of the brave. So we just need to just don't stop pointing fingers at this, that, and third, and just come together with a solution, a positive solution to end this violence. God bless you. Um, Man. We agree. Like I tell everybody every day when I get up, I work with my job. Thank you. Shows them up, food, and everything. Just walking around, just keep them open, keep them open. So, and um, this, we just need to come together. We agree with your message. Thank, thank you, sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it needs to be transparency from the grassroots, the people that live in these communities, so there won't be an issue on South Street. Or there won't be an issue on anywhere, because it seems like it's only when it expands that it becomes an issue. We want this done. And we're willing to work with you to do whatever we got to do. And I, lastly, I push urgency, because the summer is coming. And I know how this city that I love, I'm a Geechee girl in this city and I was raised here. I know how these children, I know these, I don't know those children, but I know the children. We have to start before this summer starts. And that's all I'll say. Yes, sir. Speaking of summertime, we didn't intentionally um, put the media in the sunlight while we're in the shade, but um, I know y'all are getting hot. Any other questions to, to wrap up? Well, thank you again um, for being with us today, everyone. God bless, and um, we're on this journey together. And thank you all for being with us up here. Thank you, sir. Amen.